Hi everybody, welcome to the 7th edition of the CH and FR Ghost Digital. Today we're going to take a look at block detection using current sensing with the Digitrax BDL168 block detector. We've got our test set up here. We're going to look at the track installation and wiring. We're going to look at the electrical wiring under the table with the BDL168, how to interface that to your computer. We're going to look at programming the JMRI software to work with the BDL168, and we're going to have a live demo. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, this is the demonstration loop for block detection with the BDL168. Uh, I have a basic oval with a two-track spur. The oval is broken up into 16 blocks. The spur is one block for each of the two tracks. I have power connected here, my red and black rails, and also the common ground for the Digitrax accessories. I'm connected to my Zephyr Extra command station, which is connected via LocoNet to both the BDL168, which is underneath the layout, and to my PR3 computer interface and to my laptop. Block detection using current sensing relies on the fact that when a locomotive is sitting on the track, especially with DCC, there's a small amount of current flowing from one rail through the locomotive's decoder to the other rail. And when you have a section of track that a locomotive is not resting on, there's no current flowing. So the BDL-168 is watching for this current flow, and that is how it knows where the locomotive is. We can see here how the track has been connected between this block, which is block B, and this block, which is block A. On the outside rail, I have a metal rail joiner that's make, connecting the two blocks together and ensuring that we have a single common rail on the outside. On the inside, you can see the plastic rail joiner, which is ensuring that there's a gap between block A and block B on the inside rail. We'll see when we flip the board over the way the electrical wiring is done that the feeder wire for block A on the inside rail is separate from the feeder wire from the outside rail. Now these two share uh, feeder wires that are tied to a common bus. Okay, here we are looking at the underside of the layout at the electrical wiring and we're going to look at this in some detail to show how to connect the BDL-168 to the track and to our command system to the computer. So let's start by looking at the BDL-168 itself. It's this circuit board right here in the middle of the layout. Now, we'll notice a few things. We have a LocoNet connector here. We have a large blue uh, card edge connector here. Uh, one of the nice things about the BDL-168 is it does plug into this card edge connector. It allows you to do all your soldering with the expensive electronics out of the way and safe. Now the BDL-168 has 16 sensing inputs which are collected into four groups of four and each group is called a zone. I also have a 12 volt power connection here that uh, powers the BDL-168. Over here to the left are the coils for the Digitrax transponding uh, which connect to the BDL-168 through this rainbow colored ribbon cable. Uh, it's able to handle eight sections of transponding. I have four set up on this layout. We'll be talking about that in more detail on another video. So, we come back over here to the command station and we'll show the track wire. We have our red and black DCC track buses coming onto the layout as well as the Digitrax common accessory ground. The black rail uh, goes to a common bus that feeds all the way around the layout and the outside rail of the track is connected through these suitcase connectors. The feeder wire comes from the track to the suitcase connector to the common bus. So the outside rail of the entire layout is electrically connected commonly. Now on the inside rail, each one of those feeders comes to one of the 16 sensor inputs on the BDL-168. Now, because this is a small layout, I literally have one feeder wire to each 
of the 16 inputs. On a larger layout, you may have a long block, a uh, long section, where you have multiple feeder wires, and it's okay to bring those to a common bus and bring that bus wire into the BDL-168. Key point being that each input is one sensing section. It will be one part of the layout where you can detect a locomotive. So those inputs, then you have the four zone common wires come out from the BDL-168 and feed down to this terminal strip where they are joined together into the red bus wire. So you do want to notice that the each of the four blocks in the zone are common to each other electrically. You'll want to keep that in mind. There's a lot more detail on this in the operator instructions for the BDL-168. I urge you to read those. So the local net connector for the BDL-168 then comes off, connects to your local net network. Somewhere on that network, you will have a computer interface. I'm using the PR3. Uh, that connects via USB to my laptop, and that's where we will have the JMRI software running. So next, we're going to jump into the computer, and we're going to look at the JMRI software and talk about how to program it to communicate with BDL-168 and gather the block detection information that the BDL-168 is transmitting. Okay, here we go with uh, Panel Pro, part of the JMRI package, and we're going to show how this works with the BDL-168 to do block reporting on a layout diagram. So we'll move the main screen over here out of the way. You can see that I have a layout diagram already loaded and drawn of my demo loop track. And we're going to go over here to the Tools menu and bring up the Sensors table. Now the BDL-168 uh, has a device address uh, and each of the 16 block sensor inputs on the BDL-168 fits into a range within that device address. So your BDL-168 number 1 has sensor addresses 1 through 16, number 2 has sensor addresses 17 through 32, Number three starts at 33 and so on. I happen to have my BDL-168 set to address two. And so the sensors you can see here on the sensor table are defined as LS17 through LS32. So when you go set this up, you just create your 16 sensors with these consecutive numbers. The, uh, you're making these uh, system name L for LocoNet, S for sensor, and then the 17. And this is what tells JMRI to uh, look for messages on the local net buffer from this address, indicating what the sensor state is. You can then give each of these a username, which can be something meaningful. I chose something very simple, blocks 1 through 14. One use of this is that um, because of the way the wires run on the layout, uh, you may not have uh, the ordering of the blocks that makes logical sense to you be the same as the physical wiring uh, when you want to try to keep your wire short and everything. You can see an example of this block 15 is tied to sensor 20 which is the fourth sensor uh, connection on the uh, connector for the BDL-168 uh, but it's right in the middle between blocks 3 and 4 so by using the usernames you can kind of renumber these into a logical order that doesn't have to correspond to the physical order. Uh, another feature here is that you can, in testing, you can force the state of a sensor uh, to active or inactive in order to test the rest of your JMRI system. So the next step uh, is to create blocks from these sensors. Uh, so here you can create uh, a set of blocks. I happen to create a block corresponding to each of the uh, sensor position because I really did want 16 different blocks. I happen to use the same name, usernames for them. Once you've created these blocks, if we look over here to the right, let's choose one specifically, block 9 here. Uh, highlight that. You can see over here that I have uh, assigned the sensor to block 9. This gives you a nice drop-down list of your... Uh, keep that open a little bit longer. Uh, your, your 
already created sensors from the sensor table. Makes it easier to do the assignments. And you get that set. So uh, you can have more than one block look at the same sensor. Uh, I do not believe you can have a block look at multiple sensors, though that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay, so once you've got your blocks defined, you're ready to assign them to your layout. So you can go to your layout design. This is the operational mode. So if we put it in edit mode, you can see uh, we've got several segments around the layout here. Each segment is terminated with one of these little green squares. The green square meaning that it's connected to the segment beside it. Um, and each segment, if you right click on it, you can see has a block assigned to it. Now you can have multiple segments assigned to the same block. If you have a long block, for example, uh, this is block 12 here is both of these segments so they are simply assigned to the same block. You could have half of the circle be a block uh, or a single segment. So Once those are assigned what will happen is that if the sensor is shown to be active, as we see here, the block 9 sensor is active, then the block that has been assigned block 9, which I coincidentally named block 9, uh, will also show occupied. And if the block shows occupied, then the segment or segments of the layout diagram that correspond to that block will show in your occupied color, which I chose to be red. So now we're going to move on to hooking everything up and doing an operational demo. So this is our live demonstration and you can see the locomotive is pulling its train around the oval and as it enters each of the detection sections or blocks uh, we will see that on the computer display the screen is updating with a red mark showing the block that the locomotive occupies at each stop. So what's happening here again is as the locomotive moves into a block current flow of the motor and the DCC decoder is being detected by the BDL-168 which is then sending a message to the computer and indicating to it which block is being occupied. Well that about does it for the seventh edition of the CH and FR Codes Digital. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and I thank you for taking the time. If you have any comments or suggestions or ideas for future episodes, please leave them in the comments below. And again, thank you for watching.